Well, hello there, and welcome to a film a day with me, Jordan Woodley. Now, I have covered period dramas and uh, costume dramas previously, but it's been so long I thought I would restate my sort of relationship with them very briefly, which is quite simply that it's just not, an, it, it is a genre that I have, I, I can't say I've struggled with, because I grew up reading Agatha Christie's and really being invested within sort of country house mysteries of the sort of 19, uh, 1950s? 1940s? Whatever time Poirot and then Marple will go on to, that, that sort of broad time period. I think it covers 30s to 50s, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't know, the older I've gotten, the more, the, the, the less um, connected to costume dramas I am and, and it doesn't mean I'm not particularly interested in period dramas because out of sort of cross genre it with say espionage or murder mystery or war settings or, or more extreme like a horror um, or a comedy then you have me but I don't know it's definitely a genre within film and television that I'm not particularly interested in and so when you get to something like Gosford Park, I definitely approach it tentatively with that sense of I'm concerned what kind of film this could be, but I did something different with this experience where I went in almost completely blind. All I had was the knowledge that it was a particularly popular film on Netflix, quite high in the viewing listings, and it was a period drama and that was about it. And I think that was to the benefit of my viewing experience. And, and of course, I would love to go into more films with almost no knowledge of what genre, what style, you know, who's in it. Unfortunately, by the nature of what I do and, and sort of the na my relationship to cinema, unfortunately, that's seldom the case, just simply because I just, I just, I live in the world and... I'm sort of steeped in film culture, and it's very hard to go into a film without any preconceptions. But, yeah, it was it, it definitely added to my experience watching something like Gosford Park. There is something to be said, and, I, and I've talked about this before, definitely, about how in the 90s there was this real sense of selling a film based on who's the big-name director, and then sort of that this is the ensemble and particularly with historical dramas and period dramas there was that keenness to have that sense of oh who is the ensemble cast and Gosford Park though it's a 2001 film I definitely think it is a slight hangover of that to some extent where you have that sense of we have gathered together some of the cream of the crop of British filmmaker uh, uh, yeah British cinema of that time period you know this is definitely a a a, a archive of the great actors uh, who were around in 2001 so of course you have um, Helen Mirren Michael Gambon um, Richard E. Grant um, uh, um, Charles Dance you get that sense where you just have this you know, you, you can see the trailer where it just lists the names of the actors with shots of their faces and, and you know what kind of film this is going to be. And when you get into the first act of this film, there is something about it that's quite overwhelming. You have that huge cast. I mean, it is unbelievably, like, almost incontainable for the film. But I suppose the nice thing about that is the fact that... It it works because you're you're feeling like as a, as as a viewer you're sort of being steeped into the 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 setting and there's something about the way robert altman uses the camera within the within the building where you get that sense of the upstairs downstairs the cutting between you know the upper class people all sat together you know interacting and then of course all the working people underneath doing all the um you know all the preparations and, and sort of essentially holding everything together. And there is this nice 
smoothness with the cinematography. You do get that sort of um, panning from room to room, and you get that sense of scale. So, so that this this manner feels just immense, and you just have that sense of architecture and style to this setting. And 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 I credit the film with that because it does give it a sense of scale. And like I say, with with the huge cast, you just get that sense that you know we're going to get this great epic piece of uh, British um, cinema about sort of you know that sort of old country manor style story. And of course, Julian Fellows, who went on to write *Downton Abbey*, this is definitely him cutting his teeth on that style of story and going, okay, I want to set do this upstairs downstairs style and really explore sort of the relationships between the working class servants with the upper class um sort of gentry types and, and then all the people in between and how those relationships are, are sort of interwoven and then it adds the murder mystery element to it and like i say didn't know that going in as far as i was concerned for a good section of the film i was under the assumption that the film was a straight uh, costume drama. That it just, this is, we're just going to observe this setting with these characters interacting and their dramas and their romances, etc, etc. Immediately though, there are strong foreshadowing toward, there is a strong foreshadowing towards a, a murder being set up. You know, it, it does things like sets up character relationships that will pay off later and, and you know, give certain characters air of sort of sinister undertones. And of course you have the sort of complex dynamics between characters and, and, and that sense of, oh, you know, some of these, some of these things aren't going to go well because there, there is that sense of, well, there, there's that sense of threat, I suppose, and greed and, and, and a sense of uh, sexual domination over different, you know, male characters over female want exploitation of female characters. And so you think, and, and, and of course it focuses on very murder mystery trope things, you know, focusing on ways in which Michael Gambon specifically could be murdered, particularly foreshadowing with, a, a sh with the shooting set piece, which sort of makes up the end of the first act. But again, it, it, it really takes its time with that. It is more interested in the setting and the characters and trying to just create this sense of character-driven storytelling before we get to the big murder. The problem there in is the fact that, yes, it's interesting to have a film that only halfway through is the point in which the murder is committed, but it then makes the murder secondary. You almost... There's not enough time to treat it like you would a classic Christie murder mystery, because it just, because we the the pieces are in place, and yes, you a lot of ground has been laid before the murder takes place, but there just isn't the time to then unpick that and you know create that murder mystery sensibility to it plausibly. And again, the film, even after the murder, is more fixated on character relationships and how households manage. And I think it really almost does it to its detriment because it doesn't quite know what kind of film it wants to be. Because then you also have things like Stephen Fry's character coming in. And for his entire relationship with the, with the film, is comedic. He is a not quite bumbling, he, he is competent, but he is struggling to interact with the the sort of this household and, and that relationship pans out in sort of a comedy set piece style where he can't even say his own name and introduce himself to people without being cut off. And I think that's a problem. You, you have, depending on which group of characters you are with at any time, depends on what tone the film's taking. So you have characters like Ryan Philippe, who you're not entirely sure what ca what what is going on with that character. And yes, he's interesting. He is a bit of a puzzle box person. And there is that sense of, oh, he 
there is something a little bit sinister about him and threatening, seductive, perhaps he has machinations and then and, and, you know, and you think, okay, so so there's going to be a lot about him and, and the time is dedicated to him, but then he's not the centerpiece. And then you have other things like well like like the character who I suppose is the closest you'd call to your you know, refer to your lead, which is Kate McDonald Kelly McDonald, who is very sort of bright eyed, sort of going in, almost wanting to investigate or trying to sort of investigate without actually doing the investigation. And you see her as sort of, you know, the the, the audience entry point, learning about the sort of politics of the different sort of parts of the house. And yeah, and so you just get that sense where the film doesn't, it has a struggle with its own identity, where it doesn't know whether it wants to be a serious character drama, a sort of a representation of a time period through a sort of great ensemble cast. A mur- an intriguing murder mystery about class and place in the world a sort of complicated sort of ahead of its time drama about sexual politics and the sort of struggles that women have during that time period and the threat that they're constantly under particularly if they're of a lower class and then the sort of comedic sense of um, not quite comedy of errors but you have that sense of oh class comedy and all of these identities are constantly battling with each other and it just doesn't come together because it doesn't quite know which identity it wants to have so that when you get to the climax it's rather soft and it's rather sort of almost brushed away and it's just you know it's just part of the story and it's and so it ends quite on a whimper which is a shame because because I like I say I do think this is a great cast and I think it's a really good setting and it kept me intrigued about where this film was going and yeah it's it's, it's I'm interested as, as I've always said I'm interested in when they try new things and when a filmmaker is experimenting and particularly when you say see someone like Julian Fellows who will go on to do this better with Downton Abbey it, it is interesting to sort of see this early stage of experimenting within this sort of our relationship with that time period and that kind of drama played out but it just honestly feels like it's buckling under the weight of its own ambition and it's definitely not a film I'm going to have a great deal of like memory for because it's not as interesting as I think it wants to be and it doesn't it doesn't pay off that sense of sort of ambition. It just, it just tries to be all of these different things. It doesn't quite achieve any one of them, and it's a shame because, because you know, it, like I say, going in, I I was at least engaged with the first act. Anyway, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, uh, click the like button, uh, comment below, and share the video because it's all happened in the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell to get notifications of when new videos are uploaded. Check out my back catalogue of almost 250 videos. I'm very swiftly coming up to that, um, that crossroad. And follow me on Twitter at Jordan underscore Woodley, where I tweet about TV shows and films, and I share these videos once they're uploaded to YouTube, either the day of or the day after. Thank you for joining me. Take care.